What's up? Good morning. So today we actually need to edit some sprites. I didn't want to do it, but we got to do it. percent sure um, I can just grab that and rasterize the layer does that work I'm not hundred percent sure why I'm not seeing Yeah, so I'm just gonna have to convert these into layers. That's fine, okay. And then we'll move them around and yeah. It's gonna be a uh, fun stream. Photoshop makes this really easy. What's up, Denby? So really what I need are um, 
has legs like that. I need his legs like this. So this and this. And then we'll reconstruct these frames. I'm, we don't need to do this. So I have his legs like that. I think I have him like this as well. Let me open uh, this guy. See what all we have. Yeah, so we have his legs like this. Try to do this as fast as possible because this is not fun to watch. Okay, so we have our first frame here. I'm going to flip this, make it easier to see. First frame, second frame, third frame, fourth frame. Okay, so that's that's the same frame as that one. No, those are different. So where's this one? So this one doesn't exist. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't have this frame. So I need this one. So what we're gonna do is You making a cutscene or are you just testing your sprites to check the animations? Um, I'm making the sprites because I have certain frames that I need for the different animations this character does that just don't exist. Um, so we were trying to do tile animations yesterday using a different sprite sheet, but the tiles were offset incorrectly. Um, and if I was just going to go through and have to do this anyway, where I'm editing sprite sheets, I might as well use the correct sprites um, from the actual SNES version. So we don't have this one. Let's go ahead and put this guy in here. Okay, we'll just give me a new. Oh boy. So we got this image where his legs are like this. So I might split his legs up here so that we can reuse those for different run animations, because we're going to need that. Um, let's come back over here, zoom out. So again, we have, we have our idle, that's in here somewhere. 
frame zero for the run, frame two, or frame one, rather, two, three, four, and I don't think we have this one. This one's different. So we're missing this one as well, so let me go ahead and copy that. Should be getting a new layer. It does. Good. So we got this layer now. to our first frame it is okay so full frames one two three four five so six frames total for the run again let's just double check so I can close this file down so I don't have to keep looking at it um, and then also while we're at it let's go ahead and label these so that I know Zero. That's one. Two. here oh that's not zero oh do I have this one oh so this one's actually zero Am I going insane? Are these the same? One, two. All right, so this guy's three, so I messed that up. Three, four, five, and then it should start back over. It does. Okay. So that's our run cycle. Let's close this down. Nope, I don't need you. Let's get you back. And let's start editing these. I might get rid of this as well. I don't need all this. So we'll just do a run forward. And then what we'll do is we'll place the fire animation just as we want programmatically. All right, time to edit this guy. Get rid of all the black here. Let me get pencil tool. Eraser tool. Um, five. I 
is totally going to mess up. Don't know if this selection will work the way I want it to. Yeah, I didn't think so. All right, so thinking maybe what would be the easiest is to paint a border. Also, do the characters have a black border? No, they don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the issue is uh, there's some, I don't know if there are some internal black pixels. Um, it'd be nicer if whenever you go to rip these sprites and you disable the black or the background layer. It's right there, there's... Wait, what? Oh, because I got that. Um, it'd be nice if whenever you disable the background layer, if it changes them to a magenta color. Because that color typically used for uh, delineating the sprites from their background. I should be able to do that, fill it, and I should be able to select that and delete it. Um, so there's one thing that's probably going to bug me and it's going to jump out like a sore thumb is that he does have this, he does have a border. So Just something like that, just to help that. I think that's okay. I don't think I would stand out too much. So, all right, now let's do this guy. I'll just keep it like that. That's pretty cool. Let's just do that. Just 
hot pink. Where are you, why are you outlining in magenta? Because uh, it makes the selection easier. There's no magenta in him at all. Um, however, if I just did the black, uh, the selection algorithm isn't strong enough, I guess, differentiating between the black and then some of these other inner pixels because the value is, I guess, somewhat close. So it ends up selecting those instead. I'm doing this just because it, it'll select that border perfectly and then I can delete it. And then let me delete this guy. And then I can't go through and just delete because the eraser tool has a border to it, quite annoyingly. See, it's like changing the opacity of those, even. It's just annoying. Let me go ahead. Just to make sure that I didn't. All right. Okay, so this gives us um, what should be our full animation. So, you know, Belial, you're welcome. I did your job for you. I think the pencil tool can be used to delete. Oh, can it? Yeah, see, I'm not the biggest Photoshop uh, guru. How do you uh, use it to delete? Can I just change the alpha to zero? Does it work like that? Um, no, it's just, it's just RGB. Uh, maybe I can select, uh, nope. I don't know. That's okay, doesn't matter. We are good to go, um, except I think, let's see, what was the last one I did? This guy? Do I need to change any of the border? Uh, it looks okay. There's there's not too much of a di uh, differentiation between this and this. So I think it's fine. Um, I'm going to get rid of this, though. I credit you, Belial, with the original, um, but then I had to amend it because you forgot layers. So this should be okay for now. Um, we don't need these frames though. So we could split these up and then just position them with the gun. Same for these. These animations, we're gonna have to recreate some or I'm just gonna have to do the same thing I just did, just record them and just fill in. That might be the easiest. for the sake of time. But let me go ahead and save this back out. Yes, okay. All right, so now we have our updated sprite. What we could do now um, is actually go through define sprite regions and do that whole thing. So we're kind of going backwards to what we did before, but that's fine. So if we look at all the sprite frame stuff, um, we're gonna get rid of it. So instead we're just interested in, for a frame, we're interested in, yeah, yeah. Um, just the dimensions. So it's just the UVs really. Um, which I'll just I'll just say that UVs source texture the UV for that frame good to go and then we'll still define our states this way running gun forward not fired not firing
I should probably make a video about why I use Windows 7 because um, this, this gets asked every every stream. Uh, I don't like Windows 10. I'm not going to update to it. I'm going to keep Windows 7 until it breaks. And then uh, I'll probably jump over to a Linux distro. But Windows 7 was perfect and I'm sad that it's gone. And I'm too... Uh, too sentimental to let it go. <clears throat> Any reason you use Sublime Text? I've used it for years and I still like it. That's pretty much it. And I don't like using IDEs because they're slow. I like Windows 7, but I don't mind 10. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I've uh, used it at work. It's just... I'm not a big fan of my uh, OS advertising to me, which is kind of strange. So that's one reason. Uh, well, this is good. So this will all get very, um, will get simplified greatly, right? So let me just get rid of all this. This will look a lot cleaner, which I know will make everyone happy. Two, three, and again, we can define these all like in a, a text file or something for our sprite regions, and then we can just parse that text file and grab all that information. But for now, have you thought about the fact that 10 is greater than 7, so it must be better? <laughs> yep, that's how that works. <laughs> uh, Alright, so we had... Um, let me do this. Uh, not hero sheet. We're using... Contra player sprite. loading we need contra player sprite and then we're going to set our texture uniform to that as well um okay and then let's go through uh oh, can i do this and also just collapse all this So if we go back and look at this, let's, let's flip this. Well, maybe not. I can't really just flip the pixels in place. I'm not loading it that way. Oh, uh, did I save it in that orientation? Let me see. I did. Okay. So our zeroth frame is this guy. So let's get the UV information from this. We're gonna just do um, pixel information, not necessarily the UV. So what I don't like about Photoshop is it doesn't give me exact coordinates. 
in this widget. It's quite annoying, actually. I don't know if there's a way to do it. Um, if any of you guys know. Photoshop. Uh, transform selection. Get pixel coordinates. I don't really know. Not sure what you're looking for. Yeah. How to get the coordinates for a selection in Photoshop. CS5. Uh, so we go to the uh, transform mode, then the top left coordinates shown as X, Y in the information window. Is it? Ah, okay. Well, let's dock that. Uh, not there. That's a terrible spot to dock that. Oh lord. Oh no. <clears throat> oh jeez. So intuitive. How about underneath it? There we go. Open the info panel yeah it's a shame the uh the chat is so far behind in the stream it's like 30 seconds i still haven't figured out how to how to figure that out but yeah i got it dean <clears throat> i found it on google dean before you told me but i'm still going to credit you with giving me the correct information you saved me i appreciate it so we're going to start it. Um, so this is going to be the kind of tricky thing here is because we got to make sure that we're not going to jump around. So how do we actually delineate these? That's going to be an issue, but for now, um, <laughs> so 115, One fifteen eighty three, and then our width and height, we'll just do that. So thirty two and thirty nine. I'll show you what I'm thinking. So I'll just comment all this other stuff out. We won't push those in. Um, let's go to rendering our scene uh, up above that. So we don't have tiles anymore that we're looping through. So we can get rid of all this. Um, we'll still keep our origin. We just need the UV information. And then we're just going to push back quads. Um, for now, we'll just do a zero, 0, actually, for the origin. That's fine. No, nope, don't even need that. Don't need you, don't need you. Uh, scale is good. Um, and then our UVs. Okay, so for the UVs that we're actually using, curious how big of a chat lag there is. I think it's like 30 seconds. Um, I am still not 100% sure how to solve that. So if anyone has any ideas, I'm using OBS. I've used OBS for previous videos, but I've never used it for streaming. So I don't know what I need to do in order to fix that, but I'm sure someone here does. Happy to take suggestions. So we have from this particular frame, right? So we have a sprite frame. That frame has dimensions. So let's just capture those. Spec for dims is S dimension uh, UVs that's right um, we'll just call it UVs actually UVs dot X times 
uh, this is not correct. It's just this. So the uv.x, which is in pixel coordinates, plus that. Um, the top is 1 minus uv.y divided by the height. The right is going to be L, so um, L plus uvs.x plus uvs.z divided by w. Oops. And this is uvs.y plus uvs. Uh, W divided by H for the top. Now that should give us, unless I messed something up, which is a good chance I did, uh, 146. Uh, is that a pointer? Oh, it's a dynamic array of, I don't want that, I just want. Okay. It's not right. Um, one fifteen, one eighty three. One fifteen, one eighty three. 146, 121. I mean, I could do that. Ah. player sprite we are using the correct image yes we're setting that that's all fine same here pushing that frame hmm X and pixel coordinates divided by W. That should be fine. Uh, let me print this out. Let's see what it gives me. Keyboard's acting up. Left, top, right, bottom. Shouldn't be that big of a discrepancy. 0 0.43, 0 0.81, 0 0.97, 0 0.53. Hmm. Int versus float division. Um, it's not though. These are all F32s. The cast up there. Will you add double buffering? Um, 
Well, I have double buffering in the rendering, if that's what you mean. We're using OpenGL, so we double buffer our frames anyway. Um, although maybe you mean something specific to like the SNES architecture. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, let's see. That should be fine. What is going on? Just sanity check here, so that is zero, zero. This is the full size of the image, right? 268 by 429. Yeah, then there's a, um, whenever an open, uh, well, it's not even that, uh, actually in the engine, I, oh, where do we do it? Um, so at the end of the frame, I swap the buffer for all the windows that are active, um, that are registered with the engine. So in Gunslinger, you can have multiple windows open. You register one as the main window that holds your context for, um, your graphics API and whatever else. Uh, and then at the end of the frame, it, it goes through and flips everything for you. I take care of everything um, that you don't necessarily want to take care of. Uh, so I don't know what's going on here. So grab the current frame. That is the active frame. Look at the UVs. The UVs looked okay. Right? 0.43 and 0.81. Actually, that 0.81 might be weird. Uh, 0.97 is kind of strange, too. Because it's this guy. That Yeah, that's not right. Use F, uh, SFML, S just, uh, just asking because I was curious. Yeah, sure. Let me try this. Maybe that's... Figure this out. So now it's flipped. Oh, man. Okay, um, let's be explicit about this. So I want. What's the image size? 269.430, all right. What's, is that actually what I'm getting? Yeah, more or less, it's one minus, but it's zero, zero to that, so yeah, that's it. Um, you can't rush genius. Uh, you, you can't rush stupidity either. 
who I feel like most of the time. Uh, 115.83. Or I guess you can rush stupidity. That's, that's more like what I'm doing. So let's open up a calculator. Let's use our, our engineering brains here. So what I should be expecting with the selection, so 115, 183, 115 divided by, um, is it 259, 269, 269. So 0.42, I think that was what we got for the first one, right? Come back and so point four three is the first one. That's right. And then the Y is eighty three over four thirty. Point one nine, but then you subtract one from that. Point eight one, yeah, so that's correct. One forty six. Divided by two sixty nine. Point five four. Okay, so these are flipped. Why are those flipped? What the hell am I doing? Why are those flipped? One forty six. So this is wrong. It's not left plus because I think I just typed out this explicitly. So that probably needs to be a one minus for this as well. Okay. Well, that was a whole lot of retarded. All right. <clears throat> Still don't know why those values are flipped. Anyway, oh well. Um, so that one's good. Maybe. Uh, so that's our zeroth frame, first frame. It's this guy. Wait, how'd you fix it? <laughs> uh, I think I was still adding an offset for the left. So yeah, it was these right here. So this was causing the issue. So I, oh shit. So if I go back to this, right? So I'm just I'm grabbing too much too much information from the start, which is this one. So it should be this frame, and then I'm grabbing all this other left and top offset information. I don't need because I'm actually calculating that in the UV um, dimensions up above. So I'm not giving it width and height. I'm actually giving it an X Y position in the texture. Oh Lord! All right, so I need to do. There we go. And it needs to be flipped. The way UVs are working. Cool. All right, let's go, let's do it. Let's get the other ones. So this should be number one. You know what I should do? So he's not jumping around like an idiot. I really should move these around and make sure that there's a...
Yeah, let's do that. So let's move these somewhere else. Perfect. And then this guy, let's move him up and then make sure that the feet are on the same line. That way I can at least make sure that he's not jumping around. And I won't touch these, so I don't need to mess with that first frame. And then turn this off, export it back out. Nope. Yep. And then we'll grab this guy. Let's make sure, actually for that last one, that I actually was going by the feet. I doubt I did. 113. One thirteen eighty one. Let me reset these. One forty six, one twenty one. Okay, cool. And then we'll have the same. Right. So all I'm making sure of is that this line is the same. And it's not. Look at that. The guy who made the original sprite sheet didn't even do that. Lord. So if you don't want your guy to jump around, like he's gonna be bobbing up and down, make sure that their feet hit the ground. And these don't, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Lazy artists, yeah. Well, whoever just whoever ripped this, he didn't. You know, thanks for the starting point, but he didn't have all the animation frames that you need for all the animations. Um, the, I mean, it's not it's not necessary. I guess you don't necessarily need to do that. It just makes it easy for me to be able to know that he's not going to be bobbing up and down. But again, we need to go back to that first frame now and make sure that this is right it shouldn't be 121 now it should be 120 yeah juice it or lose it absolutely and hell while we're at it let's just move him up here That's one. Um, this is five. Here's my ground line. And then let's move this guy up there. So let's organize our sprite sheet a little bit. And extend the ground line out. Bam. Um, and make sure that we actually don't cross over. So that we're clear of this boundary, because we don't want to grab it on accident in a previous UV. Oh, it's a game talk, okay. Um, yeah. Post it in the, uh, in the Discord if you want. 
All right, so that should be good. Let's export that. Final time, promise. Not really. Perfect. So this is going to start one forty eight eighty one. It's going to go to should be 120 is the last 185 120 and then my next frame start from 281 It'll go to 37. And then we'll post those up. First few animations, looking good. Four, five. I'm going to guess that the Y's are going to be the same. No, not quite. So he does squash a little bit. Yep, there we go. So that's forty three eighty two. Another great day of shoot game programming. Yes, sir. Uh, 72, 120. Why is that right? Is that right? Yeah. 72, 120. Hopefully we can just get the, it's been a lot of experimenting, just figuring out you know, how we actually want to do the animations. Um, hopefully this kind of solidifies it. I feel better about this for sure. I think we can Definitely just use it this way and extend it. 7581. And then we can stop messing around with this and get our animations all good. We can get our input input states, controlling the animation states, all that kind of stuff. 181 or 111, 120. And then numero cinco. La Ultima. All right. 189, 182. No, 189, 82. Let me check that, make sure. It looks like these are on the same line. Uh, 228, 120. Another thing I could do is set ground lines and then height lines as well. That way I know, yeah, so he should be underneath it a little bit. So 82 is fine. So if we set them on the same lines, we should be able to go across and then know where they're crossing. And then be able to look at it. So we know that they have the same ground line and we should be able to look at this and say, okay, these guys have the same height. This one jumps up a little bit, which makes sense because he's, he's standing on one leg, right? So he's extending himself. He's crouched down here. Same thing here, standing up. And then right here, he's crouched a little bit. Um, and then our numbers should reflect that. So this one, the third one should be different. Is it different? Yeah, so this one's same, same, same. This is... Uh, right here. Yep. 
Hopefully. Let's see. Well, that's good. So. Uh, anyone see any problems with this? <laughs> so he's a little squashed here so let me correct that in the sheet that one is that one's squashed as well oh boy A little bit of squash and stretch. Yeah. Just a little bit. He just he's just flexing right here. It's his flex shot. Which is that a frame that I which one is that? This one? No. Actually, it doesn't make sense that he's squashing and stretching like that. Oh, man. Let's see. No, oh, I had that on accident. I don't really see that squash and stretch in here, so now I'm thinking that it's probably somewhere in my UV code that's actually causing that, but that doesn't make sense. Unless, hold on, let me look at it again. That one is quite stretched. It's this guy here, but it doesn't doesn't look like that should be the case. What do you think about adding a bit of a buffer around all the frames so you can just use the same size? Um, yeah, but it shouldn't be necessary. That's what I'm, that's what I mean. Because the quad itself. If you, if you actually look at the quad dimensions, it would be something like this. But I guess it, if the UVs are different, then it is stretching that across the quad. Hmm. No, man, he's just bulking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the issue. Um, yeah, that's that's the issue. Um, 
I'm not, I'm not thinking about this right. Because the UVs are being stretched across that quad. It's a uniform quad, so in certain frames, if they're not the same size, it's going to look stretched. Maybe I can see if mom can bring her tools home one time. If rent is a little bit rough. Because mm -hmm. they put filling in. Mm -hmm. Now if I just wait till lunch and it's a 40 hour fast. I'll make up for the last two weeks where I've been slacking. Uh, I mean, maybe.
Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. You think of some places? You think of some places? You want to think of some places. Figure out. Let's just talk on the. No, this is our only chance. Did you drink at the dentist? What's going on? What do you mean? <laughs> Acting goofy. Oh, God. How's this goofy? Yeah. I've been trying to do this for days. You're so mean. Yeah, I'm so cold. Jeez. My heart's not strong enough to get blood all over there. Mm -mm. I don't think it's that hard. Okay. So that fixed that. So we'll just yeah, scale these by the um the UBs. We'll scale the scale the quads and then that'll give us give us our dude. So Easy peasy. And then when we go to actually define bounding boxes and all that, we'll keep that in mind as well. Let's get rid of that. Um, we actually don't need. Yeah, we'll keep that. That's what we need. Yeah, we need that. Um, this, we could actually de uh, determine how big we need it um, so that we make sure that the scales are going to be uniform. Um, Uh, so instead of 0.02, 
Got a little pixel perfection. Oh yeah, definitely. So we could actually, um, let's see, GS texture parameter description. Instead of GS nearest, we could do a linear interpolation for our textures, and then even enable mid maps, and then you get <laughs> you get this kind of bilinear filtering, which looks great, doesn't it, for pixels? But that's why I have that and the uh, texture filtering options for gunslinger textures so that we get nice and crisp and then I'm not enabling um, uh, let me see texture parameter description uh, generate MIPS let's not do that That way it's not gonna do any kind of mid map chain at this kind of resolution. It's gonna continue at the pixel resolution. But our guy's gonna be like this big on the screen, so. Okay. Um, but what I was saying right here is that for the scalar, we don't want this value. We actually want to determine like um, what would be the best way to do this. No, I mean, I guess, I guess you just want some, you actually do want like a uniform scaler because you want to make sure that they all scale the same. You don't want to jump it around dependent on these values because then you start getting the squash and stretch again. Uh, so let me actually see what this is. Um, So they're roughly like a, a value of 3940. Uh, so that's, you know, like a, a 40 time increment. So we could do like a one over 40 to get us back to the area that we were roughly. Yeah. But again, like what, what is one over 40? Is that close to where I was? 0.025, yeah, okay. So that's just roughly where we were. Okay. And we could just put this inside of the player's information. So we can save that for later, so. G player dot scale factor or something like that. Does that make sense? I don't even know. Player T F32 scale factor. Player init. Um, player scale factors one over forty. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's good. So we got him running now. So let's see what time it is. Eleven twenty.
Let's do an idle animation. Player state, idle, gun forward, not firing. So this is what we have to do for the made you decide to write this in C. Um, C is my favorite language. And then we push those back. And uh, no one does C. Like there's very few people on uh, YouTube in particular that have anything C related. It's all uh, C++ or C sharp or something like that. So. Idle, gun forward, not firing. Oh boy, it's going to get gnarly. So we will definitely be able to clean this up. Let's just do this. Sprite frame anim t anim equals null. And then we'll just start caching this. Done embedded C work a few years ago. Cool. Um, I did a little for my first job. I'm getting more into it for uh, personal projects as well. Like doing uh, EEPROM programming and microcontrollers and stuff like that. that up a little bit. Okie dokie. So we have our... So this is the uh, running animation with the gun forward, we're not firing. Um, idle animation, gun forward, not firing. So let's look at that so we can define the frames. Did I actually add this into there? Did not want to do that. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Come down here. And delete that. Okay. 
Um, where's our idol? There you are. Does he actually move? Let me, um, I actually have this open. So no, at idle, he's just, he's just chilling. He's not moving. All right, so I got 30 minutes, okay? So let's see if we can get just this, right? So idle will change state based on left and right. And then we'll move the character around. So, hey, Pistolify. So, um, let me go back to that again. Is this just stretched? That's actually, that looks like it's idle right here. Yeah, but the arm's out. So this is my idle frame. Piecing this stuff together. All right, let's 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 do this. Okay. So it's just gonna be a single frame. Easy peasy. Uh, 35, two, oops. And then seventy forty two. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, that's good. Cool. Damn it. All right, one fifty nine. What's the issue here? Anim sprite frame T an uh, it's a sprite animation. Cool. So we want a way to be able to, uh, depending on the input, change the animation that's going to happen. So let's just do like a void player update input. And then what we're going to do uh, GS platform I. We'll grab the platform layer from the engine. Okay. So, um, if nothing is being pressed, right? No input. We're going to have. Thanks, Gus. Uh, will you use a basic state machine to ha handle your animation? Yeah, more or less. Um, I don't know if I'm going to write what you'd consider to be a state machine where I have like specific states that are going to be input into a machine that are popped off and, and pushed onto like a stack or something like that. I, I might, I'm maybe, I mean, we'll see if that's necessary. If it's not necessary, I'm not going to do it for now. It's just going to be if else kind of stuff. So, which is, um, we have no input then write all. Um, and then we're gonna, we need to have like a heading vector, right? Because wherever you were last, we need to know which, so the orientation of the character. Is it even necessary to be a, okay, just like an F32 heading. So it's just one or negative one and then we're just gonna flip the heading. If else, if else trees for the win, yeah, for now anyway. Uh, I tend to take the, I mean, you notice like with all this, right? So this cleaned up fairly easily, but even even still, this isn't super clean. Um, what we could do actually is define like a 
player sprite animation resource you know whatever and then it could have idle and then the vec for for all the different frames or just be like idle gun forward running um uh or not running gun forward not firing running gun forward not firing v4 right and so then we list all this stuff out list all this stuff out these are all the frames that go for that so we could have that resource and then all we would do in here is what we go through and we would fill this out right Um, that would clean all this up. We would read from that file. That way we can come in here. We don't have to recompile. We could just like, oh, we have this information wrong. We'll just fill this out. This is what I was going to do originally with the uh, quote unquote sprite editor idea that I was thinking about that I ultimately kind of scrapped because I can just go into Photoshop and just, I can do this. Um, it's basically doing the same thing. So I don't have to waste time on it. And you guys don't have to watch me write a sprite editor. Um, yeah, we can do that instead of having all this here. But for now, oh, whoops. For now, we um, are just going to get it working and then later on we get it nice, right? So that's why the state machine stuff is probably just gonna be an if else, at least for today. Because otherwise we're gonna spend a lot of time trying to just figure something out. And that's not fun. So if we don't have input, then we are idle. Um, so if we, let's just do this. Um, if platform key down GS key code left, player heading equals negative one. Um, and then player velocity. Do I want to do that? Player set state. Uh, yeah, this is gonna get gnarly, but let's just do this for now. Um, Running, gun forward, not firing. Um, lower, upper, gun. And what we'll do is say, uh, we need player though. Player dot state equals um, player state player lower up oh, whoops lower upper gun. It's hard to do hacks and see. Wouldn't call it our. Oh, for function pointers. Um, no, I think that's great. That's that's a good idea, actually. I mean, I've already went over this yesterday, but like for my platform layer. It's a API struct. It's just full of function pointers. The reason I do this is that I ship Gunslinger with GLFW baked in. And so all this stuff is filled out in the platform layer using GLFW, but there's no reason inside of this application, I can't go through and redefine what I want these function pointers to be. So if I have my own implementation of uh, generating a UUID, for instance, I could define that myself and then just pass that in. So anytime that the engine calls generate UUID, it'll call my function, right? Same thing with the graphics layer um, and the audio and pretty much any other interface layer. Do that in Java. No, I'm kidding. 
but for real. Um, so we'll set our player state to that. Else if, uh, really shouldn't be else if, but you know. Key down GS key code, right? Yeah, Gunslinger was made so that it can be easily extended. All right, so we're just gonna have these two for now. Else, we're just gonna do idle. Here's our state machine. Are you guys impressed? Um, and we won't change the heading, so it'll be whatever it was before. Are you thinking of adding some higher level graphics API? Um, give me an example, like a sprite represent. Uh, okay, um, so I do have quad batches. There's a higher level representation. Um, so that's what I'm using for all the sprites here. So if we go into um, quad batch, right? So we have a quad batch, um, and then we can, you know, fill this up. I could do this. I mean, shit, let's do this. Um, and then for position, we'll just do I times two. Perfect. So here's our quad batch, right? So here's a thousand of the player. Uh, and this is all done done in a single draw call. Um, the reason it's freaking out is because the time is ticking ridiculous. Um, so if we go back down to here and pull that out. There we go. The army, yeah. So, I mean, if we make a big enough sprite sheet, we could be able to potentially do our entire game in a single draw call. That'd be cool. Um, just depends on how big we can make the sprite sheet. But right now the sprite sheet for the player is already pretty large, so that might not be possible. But we could probably do like most of the, uh, the enemies and stuff like that in a uh, single sprite sheet. But yeah, so that's a um, that's a higher level representation of something that's available in Gunslinger. Um, also materials as well. Which I know a lot of this looks kind of gnarly, but um, it's set up to be uh, used pretty easily. It's like for the quad batch uh, set uniform. Where is it? Uh, set material uniform. So you can define uh, whatever shader you want, bind that to your material that you create, and then you can set uniforms based on the types. And then you can pass in raw data into that, it gets passed into a uniform buffer, and then that gets passed up to the GPU. This is all, this is all the kind of stuff that um, I'll go over as we go go through making this. This is actually part of, part of the reason why I wanted to do this series was it gives me a more um, fluid and natural way of going through the gunslinger framework instead of like making a random video talking about here's the platform layer and here's what it does because I don't think that stuff would it wouldn't stick as much as if I said you know as I'm going through making something showing you how I'm using it I think that's that's more useful um, but yeah and it's more fun for me so that's what's important so let's update our player input in the app update so we're update our camera um, player update input 
pass in the player. Oops. Eyes and uh, yeah, where's that? Uh, when you build levels, would you perhaps use JSON? Um, it'll be uh, probably like a custom thing. JSON's a pain in the ass to parse, so I probably won't use JSON. But it'll, it'll be um, some human readable. Either that or binary. I mean, I don't know. What I'm thinking is that we'll have, because this is compiling in C++, so I can use IAM GUI. It's actually compiling IAM GUI in the back. Um, and part of the reason I want to do that is so that we could have like an in-game editor. So we could pause the game, move tile pieces around or something. And then, you know. So we should be able to do that. That's that's uh, that's probably what I want to do. And then uh, for our levels, we'll we'll serialize those out in some way, whether it be uh, human readable, uh, you know, be a probably something similar to what you showed I showed you a second ago with the sprite resource file, um, or uh, or just binary. So. So I think this compiled, right? And then, okay. So we're gonna do this, change our heading. So we should be able to change which direction we're looking because we're just gonna multiply or just use this in order to shift our UVs. And then we'll be able to determine if we're moving or not. So let's get that going real quick. Um, and yeah, we can, so we set our state and then we're going to get our animation based on our state. So G player dot state. And then at that point we should at least have Perfect. Um, all right, what's going on here? G player dot state. I guess I'm never setting the state. So G player um, player init the player dot state equals. Right, I guess we'll just call set player state. Player set state player um, idle gun forward, not firing. Idle undeclared. Is it? Oh, this is undeclared, okay. Still, all right. Um, idle, gun forward, not firing. Um, Oh. All right. So whenever I press left or right, he moves. You know, it's really interesting because I'm not changing the heading right now to flip the UVs, but whenever I press right, my brain says, okay, he's running forward. But then whenever I press the left key, the animation's the same. But my brain's saying that he's just running backwards. <laughs> it's uh, interesting psychology. But so now we have the idle, um, and we have being able to move 
the enemy based on or the uh, player based on our input and then if we look at the heading um, we'll just flip the UVs for left and right so um, the left here yeah it should just be left and right so the left will be actually let's see if I just flip left and right does that do what I want yeah perfect um, so Uh, what's the best way to set that? Um, I really don't want to do it. F32. Swapped. Also, I don't think I'm setting the heading, so I need to change that. Yeah. Um, player init. Just change that to one. Okay, so now we have our two animations um, and then we're changing the heading. So we're just gonna flip the UVs of the left and the right and that gives us the different orientations. Uh, I need to add some debug drawing here because it's gonna be useful in the future whenever we start doing collisions to know where the bounding box or the bounding area for this character is actually, actually showing up in world space, right? Um, thanks, Sheepy. What's up, VMA? Uh, I actually have to leave here in about 12 minutes, so. But um, I think we got quite a bit done. So we uh, got our two animations in here for the two different states. So let's just walk through it real quick. So we've defined these two states, right? And the way what is quad batch begin. I thought it was a function definition, but it ends with a semicolon. Um, yeah, it's it's just a, it's a function call. Um, I just delineate this entire section right here so that I know that I'm, It's just, this is just a syntax thing for me. So it has, I, I can totally get rid of this and it doesn't matter. And then I could just indent right here, but I like to delineate the this area because it's easier for me to read. So, <clears throat> but what this does is it actually clears out the um, the byte buffer inside of the, the quad batch that holds all of the vertex information. So it clears all that out, and then whenever you call add, it actually adds in uh, vertex information into the byte buffer for that quad batch. And then when you call end, it goes through and it sorts everything depending on what you have as the sort command. So it's very similar to the sprite batch in um, was it X and A, the way it works. But it's a quad batch, so you can do it with any kind of, you can do it with whatever custom material and vertex declaration information you want to use. So it's much more extendable than just a simple sprite batch. But, so what we have here let me just do this. Yeah, sorry. That's that's just for me.
this dot x divided by w, and then I can get rid of this garbage. And this should be the same. Yeah, um, thanks VMA. Hopefully, uh, I can, you know, I'm still not 100% happy with it in any way. And then hopefully the examples help you out to like get used to it. Um, so, but uh, I'm always in the discords really. So if you have any questions about using anything, feel free to ask. Uh, like I said, there's another guy that's using it right now to make a game. Cool. Um, and really the only thing I can do right now with the amount of time that I have is like uh, go through and make him move. But um, there's no background right now. So even if he was moving, you wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> because I would lock the camera to him and then you would just see this. So um, I think maybe the next thing we can continue working on player states, get that going. Um, but posted yesterday about the broken. Oh yeah. Okay. That was you. Thanks. Yeah. So that, that should be checked in, should be fixed. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, and again, like the sand simulation, like the Noida stuff is in there. Um, there's some 3d terrain stuff in there. There's basic demos for um, creating custom vertex buffers and there's audio work and it's all kinds of stuff in there. As I work on something, I, I tend to make an example for it because that's the best way to document it. And, you know, as your example with the I am, I am GUI example, if it crashes, that means the, documentation, the documentation is out of date. So I gotta go and update the example so that it's reflective of what the engine's actually doing, right? Um, that's why I tend to not write static documentation. I instead use examples. Cool, so we could add a bunch of different states. We could have, um, like we need to control this gun, so his upper body needs to change. Um, jumping needs to be something. Um, what else? So we can continue working on player states have all that good and go and, and going. I need to write uh, like a quick debug layer. I already have something in the graphics layer that I've started. Um, so debug rendering down here. The idea being that you'll have like an immediate mode um, debug renderer so where you can draw like line quads and circles and all different kinds of stuff um, on top of the screen or wherever you'd like in the draw call which will be useful for us, like I said, so whenever we actually have uh, bounding box information that we need to have for the character so that we know where he's colliding, stuff like that. We need to be able to see that instead of just looking at numbers. Um, yeah. And um, I'll probably need to go through and continue working on this sprite sheet and make sure that all of our animations are good some of this stuff is a little redundant, so maybe we clean it up and get rid of it. Um, yeah. So there's quite a bit to do. And then I'll just need to play the game a little bit and write down like all the different character con controls and what it needs to look like. And Okay. But I think for today, this is probably a good Stop and stop and point. So again, um, we got our dude running. So I think we're in a good state to continue adding more into this. Um, and then eventually this is going to start getting kind of gnarly. So I'll throw this into like its own source file. We'll have like a player source file or something. Uh, yeah, cool. I'll hold on just for a second, just in case anyone has any questions or anything. When do you stream? 
Um, I try to do pretty early in the mornings before I, I need to jump onto work. Um, luckily, I get to start work a little later. So that kind of works out. But it's usually 9 o'clock Central. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to try and do... Uh, I'm going to try and do like 8.30. Because I think that would be a better time for me. <clears throat> uh, I also need to um, create the repo for this so that you guys can look at it. So that's on the to-do list as well. Compose, play the instruments, record. Uh, yeah, that's actually a... Um, that's a track from uh, a band I was in in high school, in uh, college. So, um, yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna get out of here. Um, thanks for dropping in, guys. I have a Discord link in the in the uh, description, so join the Discord if you haven't. Um, subscribe if you're if you're a lurker that haven't uh, subscribed yet. And yeah, we're we're going strong on this. Still uh, still keeping consistent, doing it every day. So. All right, guys. I'll uh, see you all tomorrow. Bye.